Good morning, dear friends. As we have gathered once again to meditate on the Holy Scriptures this morning, I want you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. Let me read it out for you. Now, when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. May the good Lord bless this very reading. If you look at the heading of this passage, it says, The cost of following Jesus. The cost of following Jesus. So today, so today what it takes to follow Jesus in the midst of all this chaos and in the midst of all this confusion and doubt. So today, when we, when we read this passage, the Lord Jesus Christ calls all the faithful ones to come with him, to come and be the part of his ministry. Here, you know, when the scribe comes and says, Teacher, I'm willing to follow you, but, you know, let me, let me first, you know, bury my father, let me bury my mother and, and come back to you and follow. You know, when Jesus says, you know, in verse 24, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead, this phrase seems to be very rude. But in the Eastern culture, you know, it's a phrase which is used, you know, where it clearly says that the duty of a son takes almost 30 to 40 years. So when Jesus says, let the dead, you know, you know, bury their own dead, it simply means leave your parents and come and follow me because 30, 40 years is a long years. So here, calling is a very common you know, phenomena in this passage. And the word call is almost mentioned 16 times in the New Testament. And today, whoever listens to that call becomes the very disciple, becomes the very student. So there is a huge difference between a disciple and the crowd. The disciple simply means he is a student or she is a student who learns. But whereas the crowd, you know, who followed Jesus were in thousands and thousands, but they did not follow Jesus for who he is, but they followed Jesus for the benefits. They followed Jesus for the fishes and the loss. They followed Jesus for the healing. They followed Jesus for the special privileges. But when time came, you know, to take a step in faith, the people gave an excuse saying, you know, I have this and that and left. But the true disciples who heard the Lord followed him and crossed this very shore. So today, the difference between a disciple and a crowd is nothing but those who worship the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. So today, what it takes to follow Jesus in the midst of all these skills. I would like to highlight three things very quickly here. Number one, willingness to go to the other side of the shore. Willingness to go to the other side of the shore. When Jesus gave a command, let us go to the other side of the shore, the half of the crowd dropped out because you know, they were afraid of crossing the very shore. So today, what it takes to follow Jesus is always a challenge. It's always a test. The people of Israelites, when they were you know, coming to the promised land, they had to cross the Jordan River. So today, my dear friends, every time when Jesus calls us to follow him, there is always a shore, there is always a testing, there is always a challenge, there is always a difficulty by which you know we have to go through and become one with the Lord. So number one, what it takes to follow Jesus is willingness to go to the other side of the shore. Secondly, willing to get in the boat. Secondly, willing to get in the boat. When you cross a shore, you are not going to swim, my dear friends. It is purely God wants you and me to be in that boat. Not any other boat, but the boat where Jesus is. 
So today, you know, you know, our journeys are not similar, but when we travel with Jesus in that board, you know, our goals, our aims, our aspirations become one. And be, you know, you know, you know, be with the presence of the Lord, be with the Lord very Himself, you know, to cross any journey that is given to us and that is ahead of us. So today, what it takes to follow Jesus. Secondly, willing to get in that boat. Thirdly, what it takes to follow Jesus. It is willing to travel with Jesus. Willing to travel with Jesus wherever he goes. You know, when, when the scribe came and says, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his hand. So today, my dear friends, you know, we as a Christian many a times understand that traveling with Jesus is simply being in the church, enjoying his blessings, enjoying his benefits. But no, my dear friends, traveling with Jesus simply means carrying the cross every day today of our lives. The challenges that we go through, the temptation that we go through, the tribulations that we go through, every step of our life, we need to travel, the, you know, travel with Jesus with that commitment, with that dedication, with that very, you know, in a very grace which will lead us and guide us. So today, my dear friends, what it takes to follow Jesus, number one, willingness to go to the other side of the shore, number two, willingness to get in the boat, and number thirdly, willing, willing to travel with Jesus under any circumstances. When you, when you, you know, fulfill all these things, you're worthy to follow the Jesus, you know, wherever and whatever journey you go through. So may the good Lord encourage you, bless you, inspire you to follow Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength. May the good Lord bless you all. Amen. Shall we look unto the Lord in prayer? Most gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have added in our lives. Father, as we begin our day with the word, Lord, where you have, Lord, clearly, Lord, explained us that what it takes to follow you. Father, today, Lord, we may follow you, Lord, because of some charisma, Lord. But Lord, today you have clearly explained to us and Lord, have, Lord, made us understand that, Lord, it, it has a cost. A Lord, a cost of, a Lord, crossing the Jordan, a crossing the shore, a cost of, a Lord, a Lord, being with you in that very boat with the faith, Lord, a lot of cost of a Lord traveling with you with that hope. Father, today we just want to thank you for a Lord making us understand today this morning that Lord, without you, we are not going anywhere. Father, though a Lord, we are in this pandemic, a Lord, our families are in this pandemic, our nation is in the pandemic. Father, Lord, our whole world is in this a Lord fear and confusion. But Lord, today you have reminded us that if you travel with me, no harm, no storm, no sea, the, the wind of the sea, the waves of the sea would ever come near the boat that we travel. Father, we, we are grateful to you for the wonderful words of life that has come this morning. Father, as we receive your word and start the day, Father, go with us and the Lord fulfill everything that we have in our hearts. Once again, submitting the word and all of us. And all the hearers in your mighty hand, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.